Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to NIMBY Rails. This is the uh, grand plan, right, uh, in Alberta, right? Uh, and that's, um, well, that's really all there is to say about it. Now, uh, since, since you were last here, I have uh, added some uh, local uh, tram lines to Red Deer uh, over here. Uh, and that may or may not have made a difference in ridership on the big line here, which, as you recall, goes all the way up to Edmonton. And I don't remember what I was pontificating about doing last time around, but uh, what I decided to do was extend the line south. Now, this is not quite to where I want to... I want the uh, the line to go. Uh, ultimately, it's going to come from Fort McLeod through Lethbridge, down through Milk River, and uh, to the U.S. border here, which is at uh, Coots. Uh, the border is literally along this road. So, um, that uh, uh, that should uh, that should you know, confuse things. So coot sweet grass, look at a train station, right? Uh, this operation here with the roads, that's where customs is. Now, uh, I only know that because I've been there, right? Uh, but there's, uh, there's a whole other leg of uh, track building to do there. And, uh, and there's some east west stuff like it, to connect up to this line as well. But anyway, uh, so I'm just going to go through what I what I uh, decided to do here. So first of all, I decided that I wanted to have a connection point at uh, the downtown Calgary at the City Hall. Uh, that just seemed like a uh, sensible thing to do since I have to go that way anyway. So I just extended the, the track through here and I went underground and I just went underground willy nilly here. Because quite frankly, uh, trying to uh, thread the track through where you could get the actual right of way is just a little bit too much of a pain. Um, you know, let's be honest. And then I came from there, I came basically, uh, I came straight south-ish uh, through the mess here uh, where we've got the track running underground. Um, you know, parallel-ish with the uh, the local lines. Uh, and then it just comes straight down out of the city along the main highway. I think, realistically, there should probably be another station somewhere around down here. Uh, I didn't put one in, however, obviously. Uh, now, oh, we've got some interesting artifacting going on there. Um, yeah, okay. Then I, uh, decided I put a stop at Okotoks, uh, right, uh, where we, uh, came in down through the town. Now, I'm going above ground again, wherever I, I can reasonably, because it's cheaper, right? And then I put a stop in High River, which for some reason the game thinks is in Chestermere which is way over here. Um, Chestermere is... Where's Highway 1? Chestermere is here. And it thinks uh, um, High River is Chestermere. So, you know, there's some issues with that. Um, then we come down through... And these grid roads, as comment on the previous video... Uh, said the, these grid roads are really annoying when you're trying to punch a, a track through. I didn't put a stop at the smaller towns. We stopped in Nanton, which is uh, sizable-ish, and also apparently in Chestermere. Uh, and we continued down here to Claire's home, uh, which uh, apparently isn't in a city. Yeah, uh, okay. And then we uh, we terminate for the moment at Fort McLeod, okay? 
Um, and that uh, that gives us a uh, a pretty decent run to connect the rest of this, uh, you know, to, to connect into the existing line. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to build that, of course. But what I uh, I ran also ran forward the clock uh, quite a bit to pick up a bunch of cash to pay for this, and uh, yeah, so now if we've got a, a you know nine hundred eighty and nine hundred eighty five million uh, bill for uh, building this thing with eighty seven overpasses, six stations, two hundred and seventy two kilometers of uh, track, right? Of which 52 and a half is uh, in a tunnel, which accounts for uh, two thirds of the cost. Uh, and the rest of it is on the ground. Um, so that's, uh, that's actually uh, one of the, uh, the reasons that everything is so expensive, right? As I uh, tunneled through Calgary, tunneled through Okotoks, tunneled, uh, in, you had to do some viaducting. Uh, there's there's six and a half kilometers of viaduct, right? So now these kinks in the line here are uh, dealing with obstacles. I could make this straighter by just viaducting it, but uh, you know I'm I'm actually looking forward to the uh, when the developer gets uh, gets the uh, uh, advanced track laying stuff all all in as I'm sure I can spend a lot of time fixing up a lot of this stuff to be better uh, anyway let's build this stuff poof there's almost a billion dollars gone right okay so we have built it now we need to uh, go into our lines here and we want the uh, Calgary Edmonton intercity line Now, uh, we stop in Wait, what? Right, okay. Um new stops. Okay, we stop at E. Okay, so we're gonna go here, yep. Now, we will add stops. E. Down here. Yeah. Down here. Down here. Oh, look, we get to go all the way down here. And then we can go all the way down to here. Right? And then we can go back up again. Okay. Bam. Wait, did I miss anybody? No. Okay. Go here, 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 and we need to go here, and then we got one more stop up here at the uh, airport, right? There. Okay. There we go. We have the uh, the stuff uh, added. Now, if we go in here, we're going to keep the ideal speed at 250, right? And we're going to estimate the leg times. And then um, we are going to uh, add more trains because a 43-minute interval is too long. Uh, so we're going to go in here and... There's a train on there that's unequivocal. Okay. Uh, we're going to clone this. And we're going to add a 
We're going to add six of them because we can afford six of them. And we're going to clone the schedule. Um, go. Okay. Now, if we go back into here, no, here, uh, we go into here. Yeah. Uh, now it's giving me a 27 minute interval. Uh, that it's uh, suggesting and we had 29 before right so we're going to set the intervals okay right now uh, that should get that line uh, operating now let's just uh, up the tempo here uh, we should see uh, some trains popping down the bottom here. There's one. Um, if we were to... Okay. What? If we do this... Yep. Yeah, we can uh, follow it and uh, give people uh, seizures or something. Um, right. Okay. Now let's uh, go back in the lines window here. We're charging a price per kilometer. Okay. Um, right. We'll go back over here. Uh, we do in fact have, uh, have some passengers paying some, uh, some money to, uh, ride things and they're actually not unhappy. Uh, so... Uh, okay, we're uh, we're now uh, we're we're now moving uh, uh, passengers. We're on the uh, older section here. Um, wait, what? Hello, pause. What are we doing here? Waiting for a traffic jam? Yeah, I think we were. Uh, yeah, we were waiting for the trains to uh, leave. I guess. Yeah, we've got decent speeds on along here, so that's not too bad. Uh, I guess uh, nothing too terrible to complain about there. Uh, we hit Red Deer. Yeah. And we're not overfilling the trains either, so I think that's okay. Uh, good. Um, we'll uh, close that off. Right. Okay. Now, there isn't really that much more. Uh, I want to uh, do with this uh, this episode, but I do want to talk a little bit about my reasoning for uh, why I did what I did. So in Okotoks, I put the station underground uh, because there was a lot of stuff in the way here, and the track had to come in underground really to to get there. Then I uh, stayed above ground here, uh, and I. And in uh, High River, we had a space beside the road here where I could put the station. So I stayed above ground all the way in. As you can see, I was able to route the track in there. Uh, I had to do a few viaducts to get over some inconvenient road setup uh, here and here. Nanton, again, uh, above ground beside the, this is the main highway, beside the main highway. Uh, there are, of course, buildings there in real life, but you would be demolishing buildings in real life when you're building this stuff anyway. Uh, and then Claire's home, uh, again, beside the road. And then uh, down here, 
in uh, Fort McLeod, uh, there's a, a gap here, and I, uh, I think there's a rail yard here in real life. Um, I can't recall, actually. Um, anyway, uh, I uh, either that or it's set aside for a highway bypass. Yeah, that would make sense, because there's a highway coming across here. And that would make sense for a bypass. Yeah, if the uh, highway just came across here, went over top of this, and then around over here, probably. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, whatever. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the station here above ground, because we had space. Now, what I'm going to do from Fort McLeod, I'm pretty sure I'm going to head... Uh, I'm going to head east uh, uh, toward uh, Colehurst and uh, Lethbridge and Coaldale and all that. I wonder if they uh, were producing coal there. Uh, and then across further to uh, Medicine Hat. Um, so there will be a connection across the Medicine Hat. There will also ultimately, I think, be a connection coming down from... Uh, uh, Banff, Canmore, uh, Cochrane, Calgary again, uh, Chestermere, uh, Strathmore, all of this stuff along here. And this will also come down around to Medicine Hat because that's where the main highway goes, right? Uh, the main connection will actually be through Calgary and this will be a uh, branch line. But uh, coming down from Fort McLeod will also come down it will come down also through Lethbridge and Milk River and down toward the border, right? So we're going to have a more complicated station at Fort McLeod. We're going to have to have a couple of uh, extra platforms. Uh, or, and, uh, and I think the, uh, the line that goes across to Medicine Hat will also come back around to Pincher Creek and Crow's Nest. Um, in real life, it'd be ridiculously expensive to build through here because uh, that's the uh, Rocky Mountains and everything. But in the game, it doesn't know about that. So, you know. But anyway, the east-west line through uh, through Calgary will end up hitting Medicine Hat and then off into Saskatchewan with Swift Current, Moose Jaw, Regina, all of them. And the connection through Edmonton will end up coming down through Battleford, Saskatoon, uh, Yorkton, and uh, the lines will connect up uh around uh uh where where do the roads come down where's yorkton uh it'll come down um somewhere or probably at brandon uh maybe portage maybe portage yeah anyway uh that that's kind of uh the way the transport network will connect up uh and I'll probably run something heading up toward uh, Grand Prairie because I'll ultimately connect up through Fort St. John um, and Whitehorse and up into Fairbanks, I think. Ultimately, I'd like to run a line across from Fairbanks through the edge of the map and back over, back over from the other side uh, over here. But I don't, I don't think I'm going to be doing that uh, that until the. Uh, uh, well, I know I won't be doing that until the developer adds some sort of a uh, con method of connection around the side of the map. Um, and that's not high on his priority list, right? Now, let's um, check in at the, uh, the Red Deer uh, tram lines. Uh, so uh, my reasoning for these was just, okay, how can I make a couple of tram lines that pick up a decent number of uh, passengers? And it occurred to me if I brought one down along here from up here on the, uh, the uh, north, down around past the uh, main connecting station, around, uh, you know, and I could bring it over here. And then I have another one. Uh, which runs north-south up the east side here. Um, it would be nice if we could actually have walking connections between stations, but we don't yet, so I had to do this. Otherwise, I'd have just run it straight and had a walking connection. Um, 
And then there's a third line here, which uh, picks up stuff down from here. Uh, it goes past the inner inner city station uh, and then goes down around this way. Uh, and now if I uh, bring the tracks thing up, you can see we don't have full coverage of the city and that's fine. Uh, I'm not aiming for full micro coverage of everything. I just want to have enough passengers that it, you know, allows things to make sense. But I wanted to call out a thing I did here because I have two lines with that were going through. Uh, what I'd originally set up was this line came into another platform on the south side here. So I had three uh, cross platforms on the uh, trams, right? And uh, that just seemed excessive because then I'd need a line with two stops here and a line with three stops here. So instead, uh, I brought this uh, line in uh, and shared it with this, this line, and, you know, and extended it to a single line. Now, to avoid uh, traffic jams at the uh, crossover point, I actually built a bridge, a, a viaduct that goes over. So this is a, a flying crossing there, right? So flying junction i guess and that uh that prevents the uh trains from from either line uh, uh conflicting now when we have more advanced station uh design and so on i probably won't need to do that um and uh when it comes down comes time to uh when when the scheduling redo that's planned uh drops uh eventually uh, I'll probably be able to schedule the trains better without my brain exploding so that we don't get uh, conflicts at grade uh, at, at grade crossings and shared platforms. But for the moment, uh, I've done what I've done. So that's the uh, this has no resemblance to anything that would actually be built in Red Deer. Uh, like seriously, it has no relationship to anything that might be built actually built in in Red Deer. Uh, so yeah, uh, and you know, with all these little things around here uh, that aren't covered by the the train stations, uh, I could easily see that there be. Yeah, I can imagine there'd be a bus network or something like that. Uh, that would normally be what you would you would see. Well, um, the one, the, the last thing I want to mention here is I just have the one interconnection for two local lines and the, uh, inner city line that's by design. Uh, it means I only have, have this one station that has a potential to get way overloaded. Uh, this one, there was, it, it didn't make sense to bring the lines all the way back to the central point for these. And if I was going to do more coverage of the city, I would run a line down here, which would probably connect up to Gasoline Alley. Uh, basically, uh, that, that's what I, I think I would do. Now, ultimately, I think I'll, I'll uh, be adding, eh, maybe, uh, I'm not sure, I might be adding more stations along this line at some point, possibly on this south point here. But I think for now, I'm going to leave it as is. Now that things have been running for a, a minute here uh, with the new line, I want to, uh, I want to check something. Uh, yeah, it was the, the money situation. So uh, we spent, uh, we spent like, uh, what, what here, a uh, billion and a half uh, for trains and uh, tracks and stations and all that here. And that's fine. Uh, we got all of this, this going on here. Uh, but we're still uh, bringing in, now if we go back here, uh, the previous day, which was a Monday, Mondays and Fridays are the, uh, the biggest uh, earners, 50 million in, uh, in profit. And that's with uh, a little over a million in compensations and refunds. So, you know, we're doing okay there. Um, now, we it's too soon to know how the new line expansion is doing. I imagine uh, some of these uh, compensations just due to the length of the line. Uh, what we can do here, we can look at the accounting on the line. 
actually, if we go back to here and turn that off, yeah. Uh, so if we look at the accounting here, wait. No, I, I said everything. Okay, accounting on the line. Uh, we can see we have relatively few uh, refunds going on here. And uh, the line is making, well, that's Wednesday. Uh, on Tuesday, the line made 30 million. Uh, on the Monday, it made 38. So it's making cash. And on the Wednesday, which we're uh, just into, uh, we're up to 2 million already. So uh, we're definitely, uh, we're, we're making some, some real, real profit on this. And that's uh, kind of, uh, kind of where I, I'm going with that. Now, uh, something that uh, the developer has uh, released on his uh, uh, blog is uh, a plan that he's got operating like in the works to improve passenger uh, uh, behavior, uh, so pathfinding. That should be interesting. Uh, it, it'll be really interesting because when he, uh, when he gets that uh, going, uh, he's making things a little bit more complicated in the uh, graph structure used to calculate the pathfinding, but it allows him to uh, add better behavior with transfers, run-throughs, and so on, which will potentially reduce the number of uh, cases where passengers transfer between trains that are sharing a track needlessly. Uh, to be able to identify a train that's probably going to get somewhere faster you know, so that an express and a semi-express and a local can share stations and not uh, and not cannibalize the express stuff to the local and so on as badly. Uh, so yeah, it should be good all around uh, when uh, when that comes. And according to the same blog entry, uh, it, the uh, support that he saw from the uh, early <laughs> early release from the release. Uh, on Steam uh, was uh, far above what he expected to see. And uh, he said that uh, he's basically funded for development on the game for the next year. And I say, that is actually impressive. Like, seriously, for a game where this is the map, like, seriously, uh, for a game where this is the map, it's, uh, it's amazing that so many... Uh, so many uh, um, uh, people have uh, bought into it. You know, it's uh, it's quite impressive, and I you know I'm sure some of that has to do with uh, Mr. Failure uh, uh, covering the game right away, uh, and a couple others uh, covering the game right away. Uh, you know, I have I have to say that that um, that probably helped, but I think it goes largely toward the. Uh, just the idea has uh, grabbed people's minds or, or attention, right? You know, grab their imagination. I mean, uh, how many people are doing just this, right? Uh, let's just see how big of a rail network we can build uh, over time, right? And that that's kind of what I'm doing here, right? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, that's that's kind of kind of what I'm doing. Uh, now I'm not. Uh, I don't know how terribly exciting this stuff is, really. But if a couple people watch it, yeah, why not? Uh, I'll probably, uh, when I get into something more complicated to build, I'll probably, uh, probably come along and uh, show a little bit more of the actual build process. Uh, maybe some uh, time lapse stuff on uh, building some of this stuff uh, maybe when i get down into the denser stuff when i get out of uh, uh out of canada into the denser stuff say on the uh, west coast here or uh, or the, the east uh eastern uh, canada u.s whatever uh i haven't decided where i'm going to expand from uh, alberta i just figured i'd start there you know uh, it seemed like the thing to do, right? So I did it. Anyway, uh, I don't know what the next project uh, on camera is going to be. It'll depend on the, the time I have. Uh, 
I think I'll be uh, completing off a bunch of the stuff in the south of, of Alberta here, and then we'll start getting a, a more complicated uh, uh, network than a single north-south uh, rail line. Um, yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, I think... I need to put a hub point in here somewhere along the way, I think. Uh, Lethbridge, maybe. Yeah, maybe Lethbridge. No, Fort McLeod, Lethbridge, that whole thing there could be a hub set up. Yeah, something like that. Because we're going to have the line coming up from Pincher Creek, uh, which will run through all the way to Medicine Hat. And we need to get down. We, we, we're going to go south from south-ish from Lethbridge. Uh, I'll have to think about it. Yeah, there, there's some options here. So maybe that I'll, uh, I'll actually build on camera. Right. Uh, yeah. So next time around, if I remember, we'll be tinkering around down here and I'll be looking at what to do in this, uh, this section, like what might make sense, etc. Anyway, uh, that's going to be, that's going to be all for this time. There really isn't much more to say, uh, other than, uh, reiterate that the developer, uh, what was he called? So weird and Rye is, uh, doing a phenomenal job. There've been a lot of bug fixes and updates to the game since it came out a month ago. Uh, or so a month and a half ago or so and it's uh it's seriously it's impressive uh so uh and it will only get better uh it'd be interesting to see what this develops into and see what other uh other developers do now that this is out here and is known to be a thing that can work so yeah anyway that's going to be all for this time so stay healthy don't let the ongoing apocalypse get you down too much. You know, there does seem to be a light at the end of the tunnel, which is not an oncoming train. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, you know, if you like this stuff, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon, whatever, or not. If you, would, whichever you preferred, doesn't matter to me that much. But, yeah, you know, I've been informed that if I don't mention it, people won't do it. So, there you go. And I guess, see you back next time.